The key to understanding time dependence and Schrodinger's equation is the relation between frequency and energy in quantum mechanics. One well-known example of that is the case of electromagnetic waves and photons. Imagine two experiments with a monochromatic, that's a single frequency or single color, electromagnetic wave. In one experiment, we measure the frequency of oscillation in the wave. In a second experiment, we count the number of photons per second arriving on some detector. We can figure out some way to do that. And we also measure the power arriving on the detector. Hence, we can count how many photons per second correspond to a particular power at this frequency. So we know the power, we know the number of photons arriving per second, so we can deduce the energy of the photons. We would find if we compared the two parts of this experiment that the energy per photon was Planck's constant times the frequency, h nu. Equivalently, we would have the relation between energy and frequency for photons. We find then, at least for photons, that energy is proportional to frequency with Planck's constant as the constant of proportionality. Now, this discussion is for photons, not the electrons or other particles with mass for which the Schrodinger equation supposedly applies. But things like hydrogen atoms emit photons as they transition between energy levels. So perhaps we expect some oscillation in the electrons at the corresponding frequency during the emission of the photon. So perhaps we expect a similar relation between energy and frequency associated with the electron levels. So now we are generally proposing that the relation between energy and frequency in quantum mechanics, not just for photons, but for other quantum mechanical states and waves, is energy E equals H, Planck's constant, times some frequency nu, or equivalently H bar times omega. So to be clear then, we have said the relation between the energy and frequency for photons is E is equal to H nu or E is equal to H bar omega. What we're now proposing is that this same relation applies more generally in quantum mechanics. The relation between energy and frequency for quantum mechanics is E equals H nu or E equals H bar omega. So we want a time-dependent wave equation that somehow incorporates this idea. And we want an equation that works for a particle with mass m. And as I said, with this specific relation, E is equal to h nu, or E is equal to h bar omega, they're the same thing, between the energy and the frequency. And for this equation, we might also reasonably want it to have plane wave solutions. For example, of the form e to the i kz minus omega t. That's a well-known plane wave we've seen before. And, of course, we're interested in the case where this might happen when we have a specific energy. We've been talking about the idea of solutions like this when we were thinking about our solutions with the time-independent Schrodinger equation. We were hoping we could have plane waves, although there we did not get into discussing any time dependence. But anyway, there we had plane waves when we had a specific energy E and when we were sitting in a uniform potential. So we're hoping now we'll be able to construct an equation that has all of these properties. It does give us plane wave solutions and it somehow incorporates this energy condition. And the plane wave solutions would occur when we have a uniform potential. So Schrodinger postulated the time-dependent equation in this form. So the left-hand side here looks just like what we had before for the time-independent part, except now our wave function is a function of position and time. But the right-hand side looks really quite different. We've written, instead of E, the energy, times psi, which we had for the time-independent equation, we've written I h bar d psi by dt. So note that for a uniform potential, that is choosing V equals zero for simplicity, then with E equal to H bar omega, and as usual, our K equal to 2M E over H bar squared, waves of this form, 
are indeed solutions. That is, e to the minus i omega t plus or minus kz, which correspond to plane waves, propagating in this case the minus sign would mean in the forward direction, the plus sign would mean in the backward direction, which of course we can write out in this form with e t over h bar instead of omega t here. And equivalently, we can write them over here in this form. And in this case, the minus corresponds to backward propagating waves and the plus to forward propagating waves. These are solutions of this equation with this condition that E is equal to h bar omega. So we found an equation that indeed does give us what we want, although it's unusual what we're seeing on the right-hand side but we're getting these plane wave solutions when we have uniform potentials and energies as we thought about before, but with h bar omega being the other way we could write the energy. Now, in his time-dependent equation here, Schrodinger chose a sign for the right-hand side. In fact, he could have set it up with either sign on the right, but he chose a plus sign on the right, and that means that a wave with a spatial part of the form e to the plus ikz is quite definitely a wave going in the positive z direction. It's a consequence of the sign convention that Schrodinger chose here. And so this e to the plus ikz is definitely a wave going in the positive z direction. And that wave, including its time dependence, would be, as we've seen for the case of v equals zero, e to the i kz minus e t over h bar. That's actually just rewriting what we wrote just a second ago. Now, is this equation compatible with the time-independent equation? And we need to check this out before we go any further. So before we examine this time-dependent equation further, we need to check that it's compatible with the time-independent equation. And the time-independent equation could apply if we had states of definite energy, E, which would be an eigenenergy. So suppose that we had indeed some corresponding eigenfunction, psi of R, in such a case, so that, as usual, we are satisfying Schrodinger's time-independent equation. As it stands, this solution, however, psi of R, is not a solution of the time-dependent equation. Putting psi of r in here for this capital psi of r and t simply does not work because psi of r has no time dependence. The right-hand side here would become zero because this psi of r, if we put it in here, it's got no time dependence, so d by dt of it is just zero, whereas it should be e times psi of r. So how do we get ourselves out of this apparent contradiction? Well, suppose that instead of proposing the solution psi of r, we propose a solution capital psi of r and t that is psi of r and then multiplied by e to the minus i e t over h bar. So in our equation here, here's our left-hand side as before. When we write this out with our new substitution, of course, we have to add in these explicit factors here. But we can just take those out of this part because nothing in here depends on time. This is a spatial derivative, so this e to the minus i e t over h bar just comes out as a factor. And hence, what we have on the right-hand side here is e times psi of r times e to the minus i e t over h bar. That's our time-independent equation with just this additional factor put on both sides. There's no problem with that. This here all turned into e times psi of r. And hence, this right-hand side is e times psi of r and t. So this proposed solution is indeed a solution of the time-independent equation. So that's good news. Proposing that we put this time factor in here has not caused us any problem with finding this still to be a solution of the time-independent equation. Now, in fact, we could have put any time-varying function we liked over here, but we're proposing this specific one. So, psi of r and t equal to psi of r times e to the minus i e t over h bar solves the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So that's good. 
Similarly, knowing that psi of r solves a time-independent equation with energy E, and substituting in a new form in the time-dependent equation is going to give us, well, here's our time-dependent equation here. We've got a time derivative we have to perform. Writing that out explicitly here, here's the whole function of which we're going to take the time derivative. And of course, the psi of r doesn't depend on time, so it can come out of the time derivative. So we're left with this time derivative to perform here. But of course, that time derivative just means that we bring a minus i e over h bar out of the front here. And that is just equal to e times this entire wave function. The minus i here times i gives us 1. The h bars cancel. So we have e times psi of r times e to the minus i e t over h bar. In other words, we have e times psi of r and t. So this wave function, psi of r, the solution of the time independent equation, times e to the minus i e t over h bar, also solves the time dependent Schrodinger equation. So every solution psi of r of the time independent Schrodinger equation with eigenenergy e is also a solution of the time dependent equation as long as we always multiply it by a factor e to the minus i e t over h bar. Multiplying by this time factor, or indeed any time factor, makes no difference to psi of r with this time factor being a solution of the time independent equation. So we can always do this. And so if psi of r is a solution of the time independent Schrodinger equation with energy E, then psi of r and t, which is psi of r times e to the minus i e t over h bar, is a solution of both the time independent and the time dependent Schrodinger equations. And that makes these two equations compatible. So just to summarize again, if we had found a solution psi of r of the time independent equation with energy E, then we can always choose to multiply that by this factor. The resulting product wave function will still be a solution of the time independent equation, but now it will also be a solution of the time dependent equation. So provided we always remember to do this every time we find a spatial eigenfunction, this new wave function will also be a solution of the time dependent Schrodinger equation. Now, at this point, you may be a little worried. We've been talking about a time independent Schrodinger equation and a time independent solution, but we seem to have added an oscillation onto it. Therefore, is our time independent solution not time independent anymore? In other words, if we propose this solution here, psi of r t equal to psi of r times e to the minus i e t over h bar, Surely this thing is not anymore a time-independent solution. After all, we've got a time-dependence in it. So, if we propose this solution to a time-independent problem, can this really represent something that is stable in time? And on the face of it, it would seem that it can't. But it can because the measurable quantities associated with this state or this wave function are indeed stable in time. For example, probability density here. We can take the probability density taking the modulus squared of this wave function, and all that happens is that these e to the i e t over h bar and e to the minus i e t over h bar factors just multiply out to 1. And so, indeed, the probability density that we would have calculated from our original solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation is still the probability density that we calculate now. And, of course, what this is pointing up is that the wave function itself may not be the thing with physical meaning, but the modulus squared is the thing with physical meaning. And even though we've added this time factor in to the time-independent solution, we have not changed any results associated with that time-independent solution. For example, the measurable probability density is the same, so we've not changed any measurable results that we would get. Now we've proposed the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, 
and we've checked that it's compatible with the time-independent one. Note, however, that the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, unlike the time-independent one, is not, in general, an eigenvalue equation. It's not an equation that only has solutions for particular values of a parameter, an eigenvalue. Though, as we have seen, it is quite compatible with the eigensolutions of the time-independent equation. The time-dependent equation supports a much richer set of solutions, as we will see in the next section. Thank <laughs> you.